that uh, the panelists will begin to join the show again, rejoin the show. Uh, we had some technical problem and had to stop the show, and then we're trying to restart it again right now. So hopefully we'll get uh, Tanya, Salam, Ron, and Mitch all back again. I'm waiting for them to join me right now so we can continue this uh, discussion. Uh, let me try to copy and send her the link. See? Okay, I'm on, and then everybody else is going to come. Oh, okay, good. Wow. Well, we want to start the show all over from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly. We went, we covered an awful lot of ground. In the I'm just, just kidding, anyway. It was, uh, I'll tell you, uh, that's, this is so wonderful, but the problem is there's still glitches in the system. You know, it's just, it's, it can be frustrating, but yeah. it can also be a wonderful experience. You know, I'm having a lot of fun. How about you? Oh, this is this is pretty cool. This is all right. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. Uh, I'm really glad that you were able to get this uh, uh, working prop working so that you could be on it, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll work out all the bugs and won't have this these kind of technical problems. Right. Well, I I think what uh, once you know um, you know once we work through it a few times it should work, and that, you know that Google's all you, you always have problems because they always keep changing things. As soon as yeah. things start to go right, they start to change them again. Yeah. Every time I get happy with it, they, it usually every six months or a year, they, they say, oh, no, you have to change it. You have to relearn everything. Mm -hmm. Now, you sent out links to everybody else, right? Uh, I sent a link to Tanya directly, but I sent an invitation. Uh, how did you, did you click on an invitation that said uh, there was a notification and you clicked on it? I don't know. I, I somehow I, I clicked. I, I went to Google Plus and I yeah, there was okay. one and I just that's how they that's how they can all get back on. And I, I actually sent the link directly to Tanya too. I copy and pasted it the old fashioned way. You don't have a number for them to call them to get because I just left them. I had to I had to leave the chat the other chat because I was talking to them to get on because it wouldn't let me on. Okay. So I don't know if they're we're gonna hopefully we'll be able to get them back. Yeah. But we're definitely on air right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I not only uh, started the, the, uh, it up again, but I, I made it live, so uh, everybody's watching us. So don't do anything too crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mary called. Uh, Join this call. Okay. Hey, Tanya, welcome back. Hey, I just gave uh, Ron the link, so he'll be coming right on. In it's just a salon, though. I don't know. I'm gonna let people on YouTube know that you started a new one, and I'll put the link. To the new one, yeah. So they can they know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then uh, the only thing I guess we need to do is uh, I guess I need to send a link to Salam, but but he knows how to get on the other way through through Google Plus and then uh, the the regular way. So he unless he, he is, it might be late. Maybe he's just 11:30 uh, at night. Maybe he's saying, okay, I guess the show's over. So that's possible. Yeah, because he should see it. Okay. All right. Well, so if Ron's coming back, uh, I guess we should wait a, a, a minute or two here. But uh, no, I'm going to look in here. I was looking for um, for Ron gets back uh, Paul's Paul's words when he said that they slanderously, which they say about me slanderously. Uh, I think was that in Romans. I was talking about. Um, why not sin that 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 that, uh, that there be more grace, as some slanderously tell me, something like this. I think that is Romans, yeah. Romans six or so around there. <coughs> Are you seeing the uh, Tanya the live stream? Do you see what's going on there? Yep, I sure am. Yep, and I, I just put it on my Facebook, and I yeah. will put this on well, my promo it's video. Not like, it's not like anybody did anything wrong. We're just sitting here minding our own business, having our show, and then all of a sudden this thing comes up and it freezes up for, for no reason. That's why I was telling Mitch that this technology is great but on one hand, but on the other hand, it's frustrating because it, 
they don't have it perfected. You know, it's, you get these little glitches. In it. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often either, crashing like that. It's kind of rare, but it does happen. Yeah. All right, well, why don't we continue on, and maybe Ron will continue back with us, or or if you want, do you think it's better, we can just uh, visit and, and, uh, and start next week where we left off. What do you think we should do? Um. Well, I don't know, because, you know, to fold it up right now, uh, we, we probably, because now everything kind of glitched up. How long was the show supposed to be anyway? Oh, here's Ron now. Hey. Hey, Ron. Hey. There you are. I got lost again. <laughs> it didn't work. My Google conked out. I had to reboot. Oh, man. Okay, Ron. I, I don't know if Salam's coming back, because it, it's already pretty late in London right now, but he's probably just thinking the show's over. Uh and I guess we could go on a little further with this anyway. We got I planned on being about another half hour longer anyway, so <clears throat> if everybody wants to, let's just continue on. Last thing we talked about was the idea that all you had to do was look at the serpent to, to live. <clears throat> and but I said that it's it's kind of like what I compared with Adam and Eve and their sin. People think that the, the original sin was eating the fruit, uh, eating of the tree. And I say, no, I think it, it happened before that. Uh, and that was not believing God and instead believing the devil. The devil said, if you eat it, you'll become like God. And God said, he said and you won't, and you'll live. Uh, and God said, no, if you eat it, you'll die. So they didn't believe God. And I think this is the same kind of a situation was. And that is that it, it, was, it wasn't even a question of looking at a serpent. It was making up your mind that, hey, I believe if I look at the serpent, it's going to work. That's, that's where the faith comes in. Uh, all right, let's go now to uh, what's called the Sabbath rest. <clears throat> uh, Hebrews 4, uh, 4, 4, we'll start there. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in my anger I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for the people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear this voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua has succeeded in giving them this rest, that God would have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. Well, Mitch, as I'm reading this, I keep thinking of you. I think this is, <laughs> this is, this is right up your alley. Wow. So let me give you the first chance to, to comment on this Sabbath rest. The Sabbath rest. Well, first of all, I really have to take this back to the tree again, actually. You see, Adam and Eve were resting, eating the, of the fruit of the tree of life before they ate of the tree of the law. And so when they ate of the tree of the law, the burden of the law was on them. But notice that God had created and God had finished all his work in, in, in seven days and Christ had, had done all the work on the cross on the, on the, on the Sabbath. And so when you correlate the two, they were getting their, they weren't able to rest because they were under 
the law. And as soon as they were under the law, rest with the paradise was taken away from them. Christ had brought back supposedly the tree that brought them rest was that his work was the work that was going to finish the work of salvation. And a lot of people, we were talking about greasy grace before, look at this and say, well, then, then, then Christians can laze around and do nothing, and, 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 and it's an excuse to be slothful in God. And indeed, the thing here is, is that it, it, this does not have to do with, with, with what happens um, when we are saved in our responsibility to work for God. But we don't work for God for approval. We don't work for God for our salvation. We work for God because of what he's done in our heart. And, and we do do a work for God. But entering into his rest by unbelief is the same thing you were speaking about them not believing God to, be, to begin with when they ate of the fruit in the garden. So here we have a picture of Israel doing the same thing that Eve and Adam did when they rejected the Messiah and would not enter into his rest. And so when, we, when, when, when Jesus crossed, when he said it was finished, he said, take my yoke upon you, my, my burden is easy and light. His burden is easy and light because he's the one that did the work on the cross for us. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't, we don't live a life of holiness. But all the holiness that we live has nothing to do or could never make us look any better or worse in the eyes of God because Christ's love is upon, upon us by the blood of the cross. And so when we enter into that Sabbath rest, we enter into resting in Jesus and trusting in him for our salvation. And then we can do the joyful works for God. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about Hebrews the other day on the phone, Mitch, and... Uh, I said that uh, I think that Hebrews and Galatians were almost mirrors of each other. They're really making the exact same point, and, and, and that is that uh, this Judaism is over with. Uh, the the law is not. You're not under this schoolmaster, and, and it's it's all faith, grace. Period. Both Hebrews and Galatians say the same thing, and the way they're written uh, makes me believe that Paul wrote. Hebrews, even though people challenge that, it's a dispute who the author is. But this is Paul again talking about, if, if Paul wrote Hebrews, as I believe, Paul's talking about this rest. And that's the whole point. What were the Jews supposed to do on the Sabbath day? It's a rest. Rest, rest on the Sabbath day. Yeah. And, and, the work is finished for the week. Yeah. In other words, when they rest, Aren't they just supposed to trust that, that there's nothing they need to do, and if, not, if, if anything needs to be done, God's going to provide it, and then just don't worry about it. Just rest. Trust. Well, um, this is what the Jews do, though. The Jews don't rest on the Sabbath. They get up, and they go to shul, and they study really hard, and they do all these mitzvahs for, 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 for God on, <laughs> on the Sabbath day, because you see, even on the Sabbath, you see we're working for you, God. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're supposed to rest, and... And be so you can be like refreshed for the next six days coming up, and so on and so forth. Well, this this point here about what uh, Paul's talking about here, this rest, is the idea of that we rest in Christ, and, and uh, not only on the Sabbath, but we're supposed to always be resting in Christ, twenty four seven, and just. That rest means that, hey, it's sufficient. Well, that, this is my biggest problem with uh, Christendom. When I say Christendom, I'm talking about people who have the label of Christian. But whether they are Christian, I, I don't know. But to me, uh, there's a lot of people who are labeled as Christians, and their, their faith is in the wrong thing. Their, their faith is in their own ability, their work ethic, their, their personal merit. Um, but... To me, it boils down to, are they, if I say that faith in Jesus is my, for my salvation is sufficient, and they say, no, that's not sufficient, something else is required, and they might say one thing more is required, or they might have a list of things that are required, they're not resting in Jesus and saying Jesus is sufficient, and that irritates me more than anything else. I can tolerate any other thing, error in the Bible, a disagreement in the Bible when they when they start saying Jesus is insufficient, 
You can't rest in Jesus' finished work and just trust him. That he, he's the Savior. He does the saving. He keeps his promises, and I can rest and count on that. That's really what it boils down to. And that's the point Paul's making here, is that we need to enter his rest. Yep, that's 100%. Hey, uh, Luke, what was that scripture again? Someone in That was Hebrews 4, 4 through 10. No, okay. through 11. Thank you. All right, now I'm using Hebrews, by the way. A lot of people take that to be a works book, and it really isn't. It's really speaking about tr trusting in Christ, and, and, and so this, this believing that they're doing or the sin that they're doing is unbelief. And so it's really, a, there's a very big stumbling block, block, the book of Hebrews, for a lot of people and for a lot of churches, by the way. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, I, I've told you this before, Mitch, but you know, for years I was afraid of uh, uh, Matthew, Acts, Hebrews, and, and uh, uh, Matthew, Acts, Hebrews, and James. I avoided those books like the plague because there's problem texts in those verses, verses that people twist and miss, and you come with wrong, wrong conclusions. Uh, but when we did a home Bible study at my house on these books, particularly in Hebrews, I went from fearing Hebrews and dreading it to loving it. And it's maybe my favorite book of all um, because the deity of Christ in chapter 1 is expressed more than any other book, even even more so than the first chapter of, of John. I believe. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then salvation through faith without any, any Judaism, without any laws, without following any of these... these uh, Sacrifice. No, nothing else is required. It's just faith. It separates it entirely. It says, don't mix that. Keep it away from this. It's just faith. And even eternal security is clearly stated in it. There are a couple of texts that are, that are problems that people misunderstand. Uh, but, but overall, it's just, and we're going to go to another part of Hebrews right now, next. And, uh, but yeah, it's Hebrews is... Uh, I think I made a video called uh, "What Are Your Favorite Books of the Bible?" and I, I listed uh, John, Galatians, and Hebrews as my three favorites. You know, it's kind of kind of strange is that until you come to know Christ, until you actually are resting, quote, Hebrews, James don't make much sense <laughs> yeah. until you're resting. Yeah, it, it goes to that point that Tony was making is you have to look at it through a particular looking glass or a lens. Is that what you said, lens? And when you when you start off with this premise that uh, Jesus is our Savior God, and faith in Him is all that's required, and, and, and when you come to, when you when you come with it that you bring that into it, and then you look into it, you can see how it all harmonizes, it all makes sense, and even all the Old Testament things that people want to try to put you under the laws and under you know, turn you into a Jew, they. Uh, they all make sense when you look at it, look back at it from that perspective. We're going to go to Hebrews 9, starting with verse 18. Uh, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Uh, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both with blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. 
For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. There was a couple of words there that really stood out to me. Besides doctrine, it, it, it fits with the... Uh, the point we're making in this uh, whole study. Um, verse 23, it says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. And the patterns of things. And then we go down to... Uh, Well, there's another word too, patterns and, uh, I should have underlined this when I was doing it earlier. Figures. Okay, we go to verse 24, it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy place, places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. So we have the word patterns and figures. And again, this just goes right along with the whole point we're making here, that these things in the past, and, and looking back, uh, we can see them, we can understand what they meant. Uh, but back be before it was fulfilled, the people at that time, these were just patterns or figures of things to come, and uh, that's why it was a mystery, as Paul said, and that's why it was hidden. Uh, but what about this whole idea here that we're talking about in Hebrews 9, uh, that uh, this blood was uh, sacrificed uh, on the in the tabernacle, and then but no more. Well, uh, we, I think we lost ta uh, Tanya. <coughs> what happened? Yeah. But I, I think if you just look at ver uh, chapter 10, the first the first verse of chapter 10, it, it says, "For the law." having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach it approach perfect. So basically, these shadows were put there as a sign and as a testament, as we're, as we're even speaking about in this study, to show the coming of the Messiah. So, um, so everything that was handed down to Moses to do was handed down and was to be enforced and practiced until the fulfillment, which was the Christ, was to come. And we have many of these Jews for Jesus who believe that the, that the Sabbath will never end, that this will be an, an everlasting covenant, and that, that we have to continually uh, um, uh, keep the Sabbath every week. And so you have these Jews for Jesus who are keeping the Sabbath every week and not entering into the rest because they've thrown away, they have not entered into the true Sabbath because they keep celebrating it every week because they believe that in the scriptures it says that this covenant of, of keeping the Sabbath is forever. And if you remember, I did a, um, a video on this called Ha Olam, which is the word for forever, which does not actually mean forever. It means for a very long period of time, and it actually, it, it has to do with with, with the horizons of the, of of, of, the uh, of from day to you know over the horizon, over the next horizon. It doesn't mean that, that that the covenant was to be perpetual forever and ever and ever. And so, but they stand on this idea that the sacrifices will not stop. And so here you have Jews for Jesus and Jews or whatever people thinking that we have to celebrate. The, the Saturday Sabbath every week, and if we don't, we're disobeying God. Whereas Hebrews is saying that you'll never enter into that rest. Why? Because they keep on following the pattern of the old, and they're not they're never entering into the true fulfillment of the Sabbath, which was resting in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, Sabbath, the Sabbath uh, I guess, uh, for those in Christ, every day, every minute's the Sabbath, so you don't have to worry about a particular day. Exactly. Exactly. My point. Exactly. Yes. So the idea of a Sabbath rest um, uh, for us is a continual rest. 
we're always should be resting in in uh, in the arms of Jesus and, and not worrying because He is faithful. I mean, if we can't trust Jesus, if we can't depend on Him, who who the one who, who created all things, who has the power of life and death, and has made these certain promises to us, if we can't just rest and trust in His, in his arms, then, then I guess, um, what, what could you possibly rest in? You can't, there would never be any rest, you, because nothing else can, should be able to give you that kind of rest. Well, there's, there's, there's going to be a, a backlash on that, because a lot of people are going to look at this, and this is how they look at, at free grace. They look at free grace and say, well, then what do you do? Is there nothing that you do for God at all? And, and, Tell me, and, yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> there's not. nothing that we do, right? Well, That's the it. thing is, is that in order to do anything, you've got to be able to rest first. In order mm -hmm. to do the works of God, you've got to be able to rest in Christ. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean we stop working. This doesn't mean that we stop. That This is what makes the gospel come out of us. The more we rest in Christ, the more th the more we're doing the work of God by proclaiming the rest of, rest of Christ. The more we're persecuted because we're proclaiming the rest of Christ. You so the, the, more, the more, the more we're, we're doing more works by resting in Christ than mm -hmm. those who claim to rest in Christ. They're just their works will be burned up. Their works, you'll know them by their fruits. They're the wolves that are out there who are bringing us back under Moses. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so say you, uh, you you get the rest. I, I don't. I get the rest knowing I can't screw up. <laughs> That's what you I, can't I, even mess up your own salvation. Yeah. That's Isn't the rest that for me. Think about it. Everybody's worried about messing up their own salvation once yeah. they believe the salvation is in their hands. Once you're not worried that you you can't you can't even mess up your salvation. Right. Does that cool. make does, does that make the joy come out of you? Does that make the, the thanksgiving and praise come out of you? Is that not problem. making the works of God come out of you? Believing that you can't mess up anything because yep. Christ did the work and not you. Since you can't mess up, you might as well do something good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean that, I, that's that's the truth. There's there's a lot of people that they don't know the lordship people, lordship of salvation. Unfortunately, they'll never know. They'll never rest. They're, you know, they don't know from one day to the next if they did what they had to do that day, or or whether they uh, uh, were forgiven for that sin. You know, if the ones that are asking for daily forgiveness of sin and uh, they're living in constant, constant no rest. I don't know what you call attention, maybe. There's a now that's that should be brought out right there. The idea that if we confess our sins, he's for, for faithful to forgive us our sins. A lot of people mean that that's perpetual. They think that this means that it's perpetual confession. And the thing is, is that, that that's not what it meant. It, it basically it. it, it that that would be not you wouldn't be able to rest if you thought that oh boy I made it if I don't if I don't get back to God and make a confession right away I might be I might be damned again that would be to to recrucify Christ but in John what that's speaking about is the fact that once you realize that you are a sinner and you can admit that you're a sinner right if you say you have no sin you're a liar you have to be able to in order to be to to, to accept get salvation you have to realize that you need it. But once you've already confessed that you're a sinner, not every single sin that you've done in your entire life, you know that you need Christ. This is where this is where Christ comes in and forgives you of all of your sins, past, present, and future. And really, these things have to be addressed because there's tons of, uh, of weaker brothers out there and sisters and, and people who can't rejoice in Christ because of these things that they've these these this hearsay that they've heard. Here and there, from well, this is what you need to you, know, you need to worry about your salvation because, of course, if you sin, if you sin, you've got to go confess right away because if you if you die before you make it to the confessional, yeah. you know you you, you Jesus mean, only you, died for yesterday's sin. He didn't exactly, die. <laughs> five minutes ago I might have sinned. I better jump. I would be I would be constantly on my face all the time. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Got to make sure I, I might keel over right now. So I better make sure that I'm in the kingdom by confessing. Yeah, I mean. It, Never any treadmill. The, uh, uh, I don't know how much you guys saw of the uh, last week's program. I tried to recap much of it in, in, a, in the beginning of today's uh, show. Um, I didn't cover 100% of everything. But if you can think of any gaps between what we're going to move into next is the tabernacle, 
the priests, the, uh, the, the sacrifices, uh, the blood sacrifices, the law, all those things. But um, just chronologically, from the time of the tree of life, and we, we, we saw um, the, 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 the covering for Adam and Eve, the, the animal coat covering, and we saw the, 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 uh, the offering by Abel that was acceptable, and we went on, we saw Noah and the ark and all those things. As we worked our way through all those things, is there anything, and we saw the brazen uh, serpent, is there anything you think that uh, is a really significant shadow or picture that we neglected, that we might have missed along the way that comes to your mind? As far as Christ is concerned? Yeah, what I'm looking for is anything that might illustrate the, uh, the uh, Jesus' blood atonement. Because we're going to move into the blood sacrifices and the tabernacle and all what all that stuff means next. But uh, before we uh, we do that, do you think there's anything that came to your mind that I might have uh, left off? Well, I would have to go over the history. I mean, of course, we've skipped the Tower of Babel. We've we've skipped the um, the wedding of uh, of Jacob. Uh, we. You know, there's there's things that, of course, there's gaps in there, and in, in those stories, I haven't really uh, dissected them to see, like you know, I know that, and and then look at them in the Hebrew, like like uh, uh, Jacob's father-in-law's name was Laban, which is Levan, which is Hebrew for white, and uh, he was the one that kept all the white sheep, and 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 Jacob was the one that got all the black sheep, you know, all the all the spotted sheep and the mottled sheep wound up with with um, with Jacob. And so how do these sheep maybe correlate to the gospel themselves? I mean, um, I think there's going to be gaps to a certain degree. And maybe uh, if we make it our, a point to, uh, if we all, all start to look into those, those older uh, those, the scriptures, to look at these stories to see if they can find anything or find any commentary on it, then maybe we could fill some gaps. But I think that pretty much we've done a pretty bang-up job on, 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 on showing the, the sacrifice of uh, of Isaac, the the um, you know the, the the Joseph in the well, Moses, uh, you know, in 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 the desert, and and so, and then the next will be probably Joshua leading them into the promised land. Would probably be, I I think would probably be our, our you know chronologically our next our next step. Yeah, Joshua, I had on my list to discuss. I ended up scratching it off for some reason, but let's talk about Joshua. And then I'll, I'll end that live broadcast and we can just talk uh, among ourselves for a while. <clears throat> but uh, uh, first of all, um, if, is Joshua somehow a picture of Christ? Uh, and to, I'm going to say, yes, he is in certain ways. Uh, per, and we can start off with his name. So go ahead. What do you have to say about his name, Joshua? And the name Yeshua. Well, Yeshua means God saves, right? That's what Yeshua means, God saves. So, so here we have Yeshua, where all the, all the Israelites died in the desert, but the, the, the chosen ones and the new generation goes in through the waters. I think it was called Yam Suf. Yam means sea, and I think Suf means death. I'm not sure. After, one of those seas meant the sea of death. And Yam, of course, means ocean or sea. But anyway, so Joshua, Yeshua, leads them through, just like Moses led them into the desert, into the law, but gave them, gave them grace through the sacrifices. And then we, we see another picture here of Joshua, where Moses could not go into the promised land, but Joshua led them into the promised land, so that by Moses, nobody got into the promised land, but it was through Yeshua that they they entered into the promised land. It's it's, right. uh, it's it, you know that that's got to be uh, right there. That, that that's got to be a picture of 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 the law of Moses not being able to deliver, but Christ or Yeshua being able yeah. to. That's a beautiful point. And and when I said let's start off with this name, <coughs> uh, people think of uh, the name Joshua. Uh, which is an English version, but the name, his name actually was Yeshua, and Yeshua 
is also uh, the origin of the name Jesus, the English translation of Jesus. So Jesus, Joshua, and Yeshua is all the same thing. And it does literally translate to uh, God saves, or I, I, I really think it means God who saves. Jesus is God who saves. And Joshua, as you said, he was the one that was able to, to complete what Moses couldn't do. Moses was, uh, you know, he, he, he got them he, out of Egypt, freedom from slavery and all that, but he was uh, failed to get them to the promised land. It took Joshua, Yeshua, and for us, it takes Jesus, our Savior, to get us into that promised land. Whereas the Jewish promised land was a, a, a physical, literal land, a country, their own country, uh, uh, the land of milk and honey, but for us, the promised land is our eternal life in the kingdom of God. So, what was that river that uh, Joshua touched, like like uh, Moses touched the Red Sea and it opened up, and Joshua touched this river and it opened up and it dried up so they could cross the river? I'll have to look at the, the actual the Jordan river. river. Was it the Jordan or was it some other river? I, I remember he did open up a river just like Moses opened up the Red Sea. I, I don't want to say anything on that uh, because, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't have geography in front of me. I don't have the scriptures in front of me. But I, I, that I, would, I would imagine that the name of that river is very significant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Joshua because I had him in my notes and then I, he's not there. So I think that... Um, we cannot list like bloody things with Joshua. Um, there's no, there's no blood sacrifices, and there's no uh, uh, manna from heaven, and there's no uh, uh, quails coming from the sky and the meat and all the things that we symbols that we see with Moses. But we see with the name Joshua, and we see with him, he actually accomplishing, getting him into the promised land. That is uh, like maybe the best. A picture of Jesus uh, that I can think of about all the people, all of all the individuals. Right, but you have to remember that first he sent out the spies. Remember that he sent out the twelve the representatives to the twelve tribes, and they and, and they didn't believe. Right, it was it was uh, Caleb, which means I think dog. Caleb is dog in in Hebrew, and uh, which I don't know, faithful dog or whatever, but it's Caleb or Caleb, and. And Joshua, they both spied out the land, and they came back, and they said, look at this beautiful land with these big, giant fruits and everything like that, where the other people saw giants in the land. So we have Moses, and we have them led through the blood and everything, but they, wouldn't, they didn't have enough faith. That what they saw was they saw giants, and, and they didn't have enough faith to, to, to seize the land that was in front of them. And uh, so I think that that's, that's going to be something significant when... When, when Joshua actually did lead, the, lead them into the Promised Land, and the inheritances were handed out later on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the live stream now, and then let's just keep talking uh, our, um, among ourselves. So anybody who's watching this, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that we had the break in the video and had to restart it all. It's just one of those technical glitches on uh, the internet right now that uh, it's wonderful but not perfect. So we did the best we could under the circumstances and tried to restart it. And we'll pick up uh, here where we left off uh, next Sunday for another episode looking at uh, the Old Testament pictures and shadows of, of, the, of the future blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you don't... If you don't uh, have your salvation at this point, if you're watching this video, to receive the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, it's really simple. It's, you just need to rest in Jesus' arms. Believe that Jesus is the answer. He is our Savior. He died for our sins. He gives us uh, eternal life uh, as a free gift when we put our faith in Him. So put your faith completely in Jesus. He gives you eternal life. If it's not complicated, there's no strings attached, it's easy. Just believe in Jesus for your salvation. And if you do that now, then make a comment and say, today I received the gift of eternal life because of my faith in Jesus. So, 
Uh, you guys, thanks for participating on the show. I'm going to close it now, and then I'll talk to you in a minute. And I'm going to click.